Assalamualaikum and very good afternoon to Dr. Technologist Dr. Norishina Harani Hagis and Technologist Muiz uh, and also uh, to all the participants. First of all, I would like to say uh, Salam Lebaran, Salam Shawar to all of you. <laughs> it's, it's still not late for me. Okay, uh, Alhamdulillah, uh, for this year we can celebrate. Actually, we, we, we celebrated the Raya for the past two years, but with limited, uh, limited version of Raya just inside our own home, and we cannot go to, uh, we cannot, no Rantas Degri, no Rantas Era, no Kujong Kujong. But uh, for, the, for this uh, time, uh, we have, we are able to uh, back to our hometown and meet other relatives and friends. Okay, Alhamdulillah. So, uh, thank you very much for joining the sessions. And for the uh, without further delay, I'd like to uh, introduce our speakers today, which is the technologist Dr. Nur Shina Hrani Haris from University of Malaysia, Sabah. She was born in Papar, Sabah, and obtained her first degree in civil engineering from USM in 2008 before graduated in master, okay, master degree in civil engineering in 2010. And then she joined the University of Malaysia Sabah as a tutor in 2011 and then further study for PhD level and graduated successfully in 2016. She has a lot of experience in civil engineering from uh, as an engineer and a researcher and also a, a teacher or educator. Her expertise focus on SQL engineering and mostly in a seismological part. For the last Uh, 10 years, he she also active in a lot of uh, project for consultancy. She also uh, active in uh, conducting research as well as writing in uh, various uh, conference and journal. She also supervise a lot of students for both uh, postgraduate and undergraduate level. And uh, for the before, uh, I mean. Uh, To avoid any delay, I like to invite our speakers, technologist Dr. Shina, for to deliver her topic. Welcome. Okay, terima kasih technologist Dr. Iwan. Macam di jauh lah, revisit ini. Okay. <laughs> right. Uh, thank you very much, technologist Dr. Iwan, for the introduction. Selamat Hari Raya to all of you. Welcome to this uh, lecture. Uh, this is actually uh, this uh, one of the topics for my course, Earthquake uh, Engineering. So I also uh, invite, uh, this is the collaboration between our Faculty of Engineering UMS with uh, UNIMAP, University of Malaysia Police, as well as University of Malaysia Paham. Um, I think uh, most of uh, this here, uh, most of you are from undergraduates. Uh, ada juga mungkin from other uh, outside uh, university. So I would like to say a welcome to this uh, lecture. So I will uh, start with uh, sharing my slide. So our topic today is uh, this one, okay, about the probability of accidents and return period for building, bridge, and dam. Okay, uh, but before we uh, move to this uh, quite advanced in terms of the technique and equipment engineering, so most of my students has covered and have a knowledge about Uh, seismology, how to get the earthquake database, and how the earthquake uh, come from the fault line. All these uh, uh, the seismic loads coming from, and how these seismic loads will affect to the buildings. So, so this is uh, before you coming to this. So you, I'm sure that uh, most of you has already know a little bit knowledge about seismology and earthquake. Uh, database and um, earthquake engineering, right? Um, okay, so before I start, 
okay, most of my uh, lecture, I will uh, refer to this uh, uh, YouTube. Okay, this is, uh, I, I want to promote to you guys, okay, because this is very useful and very informative um, YouTube channel. Uh, the first one I refer to Pak Irwan. Uh, this is um, made by our uh, my friends, yeah, uh, Thai moderators, our moderators, uh, Dr. Nils, Dr. Iwan. This is uh, his uh, YouTube channel. You may go to this name, Pak Irwan, and you may must, uh, you then you can subscribe. So all of the knowledge on how to do analysis, for example, the static load and dynamic load are explained in this uh, channel. And another second channel that I uh, usually refer to is uh, this Fawad Najam. And this is uh, explained about all the seismology, the earthquake from static, from the basic level until the advanced level. So if you want to know more on the basic of earthquake seismology and still the advanced, advanced and also using the software analysis, you may refer to this um, YouTube channel as well. Okay. Okay, so my lectures uh, will be uh, has a three section for today's uh, for today's lecture. So I would um, try my best to uh, explain this uh, three section within two hours of our lecture today. So I will go the first one on the introduction. Okay, some of the interesting facts about earthquakes. And uh, we will go to what will, uh, is the types of earthquake hazard, and we will go uh, on the definition on the seismic hazard. And then on the second section, we will go to the ground motion parameter. So most of the uh, building, when designing a building with seismic load, they're usually referred to this ground motion parameter that uh, will be based on the hazard analysis. And we will try some uh, example uh, using the simplified PSHA. PSHA is uh, this, uh, from, from, from the probabilistic seismic hazard assessment. And then uh, the last section will be uh, more on the earthquake recent design that what is the criteria that we usually tackle for building bridge and dam. So our first section will be on the earthquake facts. So in uh, around the world, so this is the report that been uh, published by this person in 2021. So if you see the graph, um, kita nampak sangat lah, tapi boleh tengok ada uh, chart, the death from earthquakes. So this is the record uh, since 1500. 1500 until 2017, and we look into this, uh, this is the year and the total of death. So the total of deaths, we see that it keep increasing decades by decades, okay? And um, since 1500 years, 1500 years until now. So in uh, statistic statistically, so we can say that 20,000 people are killed every year by this natural phenomenon. Natural phenomenon by the earthquake. Okay, because of the 20,000 people uh, killed per year, why? Okay, if you see and look into this map, okay, there is a very uh, colorful figure here okay, showing that this is an earthquake event collected from 1904 to 2014 by this guy. So if you look into this, so there are so many um, epicenters, okay, earthquake from the moderate earthquake 5.5 until 9.5. So if you look see uh, over here is the earthquake happen in this uh, very densely populated. Okay, there are so many earthquakes happen here. We are here, then. Eh? So we look into this. Uh, actually, the earthquake happened since that 1904. So means that uh, earthquakes happen if we had, if you learn about the plate boundaries, 
plate boundaries is the movement between plates. Okay, so most of this earthquake, the big earthquake, moderate this earthquake, occur on these plate boundaries. Okay, and uh, some of the part will be a uh, no earthquake, but if we move much more closer to the black boundaries, the earthquake is uh, much more active. Right. So, and then this is the interesting earthquake facts. Dangerous earthquake location. This is uh, actually collect, I collect from this uh, person. A new mapping project, 10 years in the making, found that Japan, China, Philippines, Iran, and Indonesia are among the 15 countries that could be labeled as dangerous earthquake location. Labeled as dangerous earthquake location okay, because it's uh, these uh, five countries are among the active uh, earthquake activities. So if you look into this Asian region, so we have most of them is uh, from Asian region, but we are uh, neighbor, our neighbor, Philippines and Indonesia is quite close to us. Okay. And uh, this is should be, we should be aware the earthquake that coming from Philippines and Indonesia. And uh, about the fatalities, so some cases, if we look into the active uh, regions, we know that the building must design on the seismic loads because it will create some damage to the structures, right? But nowadays we look, we see that when we have uh, just a small uh, magnitude or minor magnitude, a uh, minor uh, earthquakes on a certain area, that that also can create a uh, heavily damage to the structure because of the uh, the structure is not designed with the uh, designed to withstand the earthquake loads. So uh, many slight like earthquake can cause structure to collapse if they weren't built to survive earthquakes. And the severe shaking can lead to higher earthquake fatalities. So if, uh, if you look into our Malaysian condition, we are categorized low to moderate. If we are stable, stable, but no earthquake, then we are safe. But we are stable with low and moderate earthquake. So in this case, uh, we don't know how much earthquake will happen in the future, but we have the statistics. So what we do is we have to design our buildings based on uh, with uh, the building that can survive uh, from the earthquake shaking that um, can reduce the losses of human life. And this is another earthquake facts. So what is the, the greatest earthquake ever in happened in our world? So in uh, 1960, it's happened in uh, 1960 in Chile. So the magnitude is uh, the highest ever recorded, which is equal to 9.5 magnitude. So it's quite high, and this is, I think, the uh, the most. Um... Sorry, Dr. Shina. Dr. Yes? Shina. Sorry, eh? saya nampak ada komen dari chat ni. Slide kita nampak kabur lah. Macam mana nak buat ya? Eh? Oh, okay, okay, okay. Oh, oh saya 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 tak setting tadi. Okay, okay sorry ya. Eh? Saya pelik semalam yang duduk je. Ah, itulah. Saya terlupa letak okay. itu yang betul animation. Oh, ya. Eh, sekejap. Webex ni dia ada setting dia, ada banyak sikit. So, okay. uh, kalau motion, so kena klik option motion. Okay, now clear? Now clear, you nampak? Cuba kejap sikit lagi. Macam-macam ni lagi. Macam belum 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 jadi lagi. Macam masih blur? Blur lagi. Tulisan dia macam tulisan Tamil. Sekejap. <laughs> hmm. Kenapa? Text and image for <laughs> Okay, how about now? Okay, good. Better. Thank you. Dah nampak uh, perform oh, apa. Alright. Rasanya tadi sweet, video. Uh, aerial, aerial. <laughs> okay. Alright. Okay, thank you. Eh. Okay, thank you for the comments. 
Okay, so this one is a, the, just the earthquake facts. Okay, sebelum kita go to section berat-berat sikit. Right, so the um, the first one is the greatest of the happened in Chile okay, in 1960, which uh, the magnitude is 9.5, the largest ever recorded earthquake. And then what about the highest number of earthquakes? So we have uh, these two locations, okay, so from USGS, two locations, which is uh, in Japan, another one is Indonesia, are the two countries with the highest number of earthquakes. Indonesia is our neighbor, okay, so it's quite close to Peninsula, right? So this is we should tackle on and we should be alert lah, because um, uh, Indonesia is the highest number of earthquakes. Okay, and, uh, in, and these two countries has uh, record the uh, tsunami uh, in a uh, few years back. And uh, what's the terms of megaquakes? Megaquakes is actually uh, the highest uh, earthquakes, which is magnitude of 10. So, mesa of 10 is called as a megaquax or higher. So, actually, it's impossible okay, by the scientists. This is actually we cannot achieve until mesa of 10 because uh, uh, because the earthquake method we calculate based on the fault line length of the fault line. So, the fault line length is not capable that we have now in our world. It's not being capable to produce the magnitude 10. So, uh, okay lah, means uh, we are glad to hear that we cannot, because 10 is uh, the most and um, higher magnitude, which, which can, um, uh, which can uh, severe damage to the buildings, okay? And, uh, and then the casualties, okay, most of the uh, casualties uh, between magnitude 9.4 to 9.6, is uh, can kill people and will injure thousands of people in the city and around that city. Okay, that close to the city. So it's a very um, dangerous earthquake if we have this type of uh, mental of 9.4 or anti 9.6. And um, probably you know about earthquakes, but it actually has uh, several types of earthquake hazards. So the first one, we normally say that earthquake produce shaking, earthquake produce shaking. So this is actually one of the types of earthquake hazards. We feel the shaking. Okay, we are inside our house and once earthquake coming, we feel the shaking above the ground. And then um, surface rupture. In many uh, places, they are producing this uh, surface rupture once the earthquake coming, and on the surface we can see there are holes, at a point uh, displacement between the uh, surface area. So we can see some displacement once for up and once for down. So this displacement that produced by the earthquake we call as a surface rupture. So this is due by the earthquake class. And then we have a ground failures. So normally the ground failures, we uh, are coming, uh, are the effect from the earthquake. The earthquake, uh, the earthquake shaking, and then suddenly the soil is liquefied, means uh, it cannot sustain any load. It turns into liquid. And then it will uh, create sometime in the uh, hill, hill sites where uh, they are not strong or unstable environment. So they will produce some landslide, mudslide, and some differential soil settlement. So this is the um, effect that if we have an earthquake. And then uh, tsunami. Okay, tsunami is um, due to the sea level coming from. Uh, the foam under the sea. So this is uh, happened once uh, there are displacement in the sea and it will produce this uh, huge wave, this huge wave and coming to our seashore and um, will create damage to the building as well. And uh, floods, okay, uh, if we have uh, dams, if we make a dams or um, Okay, so 
If we have an earthquake and damaging the dams, it will create flows in some other places that close to these dams. And fires okay, resulting from earthquake. If we have earthquake that uh, happen, and if the structure has um, something that, for example, power plant, so it can uh, easily catch a fire due to this uh, earthquake vibration. So this is some just some photos of uh, types of earthquake hazard. And this is the case of uh, Majini City in Sulawesi. The magnitude is 6.2. This is due to the ground shaking hazard. The ground shaking hazard, uh, you can see this is a house. I think a three-story house it is uh, badly damaged due to the earthquake. So uh, this is total loss. You cannot uh this um the structure is uh, badly damaged okay the, we cannot see any structure here so the beam the column all the natural and this is another one okay we can see uh some of the houses is badly damaged some of the structure is still standing if you look into this okay, this other the orang lagi ya, sitting on this house even those uh this Structure is already badly damaged, but this uh, structure probably has uh, some uh, moderate damage to its structure, such as on the wall and on the column side. And this is a uh, uh, surface rupture hazard. Tadi kita shaking, uh, shaking. Okay, earthquake shaking. Okay. So, so this is the type of uh, surface rupture. Once we have earthquake, the surface of the ground will displace. Okay, this is example from Shikang Dam in 1999. Chi earthquake in Taiwan. You can see that this is the dam has uh, damage on this side. Okay, because uh, the fault line is over here. Okay, the fault line is over here. So we can see once the surface structure has it open, happened, so it's caused a displacement from of the area. So one will go up, one will go down. And if you look it closer, this is the uh, uh, this is the, the level, okay, the original level, original level. So you can see this side has been lifted up by uh, eight to nine meters. Go up. So we can we cannot see the fault line over here, but from this pattern of structure, we can see we can say that one um, ground surface here has goes up, and uh, this remaining at this level is still uh, here. So it is uh, considered a uh, very uh, dangerous if we build dams exactly on the fault line. So in our um, to reduce the loss by the earthquake, our structure should not be built on top of the fault line because we should be we should avoid that and also we should avoid our structure to be built close to the fault line. I think this is the case uh, when they do not know about the fault that have under these dams. So they just built these dams. And then once the earthquake happened, so this is what happened, All right? Yeah, this is uh, just a repetitive from that. The ground shaking caused vibration in them. Okay. And then fault movement in the dam foundation or movement along this continuities in dam foundation near major fault, which can be activated during strong earthquake causing, causing structure distortion. And this is due to the soil liquefaction. This is a picture on the, from the Hokkaido Uluru earthquake of Japan. So once earthquake is happened, Sometimes the soil has lost its strength. So it's lost its uh, bearing capacity. So it cannot sustain the load, the, the soil become liquid purple. So once the uh, it happened and liquefaction happened, 
So we cannot, um, we have to demolish this building. Lah. Means that we can, we, uh, here the location is not safe for people. And then another picture okay, showing that the defection hazard, okay, this house is already wants to go uh, this, uh, this side. Okay? It's protected. But this house is standing, only this area is um, having the soil defection. Okay, this is due to the earthquake, not, not from the normal soil settlement. This is from the earthquake. Once the earthquake is shaking this area and the soil liquefaction happened under the top. And then earthquake can also trigger landslides. So this is uh, the case from Wenchuan earthquake in China. So they built their buildings, okay, they are so uh, moderate, moderate uh, stories of building, I think. So you can see there are badly damaged due to the soil settlement. Okay, the soil uh, from the earthquake and then landslide happened. So it moved to another places. Okay, once the landslide coming, earthquake coming and then a uh, landslide is induced. So you can see that all the house are going into a new place. So they have to be seen. So this area is not safe. You can see there are so many uh, landslide happen uh, in this um, 7.9 magnitude. And this is because of the unstable soils and uh, uh, for this uh, hilly site. Okay. If we do not do not uh, prepare some, some uh, stable embankment uh, in this area, so once a squid is coming, it's not safe for the people. To live uh, beside this hill. Okay. See, there's total loss also will would be increased. Like, you see so many houses involved and I and will involve so many loss of life. Like. And also uh, earthquake can trigger tsunami as well as fire. Or so if we have um, uh, buildings that store uh, very explosive material, it can create fire. And this is actually a picture from the previous Japan 2011 with magnitude of 8.9 that caused the uh, tsunami. You can see the water. Uh, and this house has been moved from one place to another place. Okay. And some of the area probably stored some of um, uh, which can uh, catch fire easily. So it will create some uh, explosion okay, to this area. So will be create a highly damage of structure as well as um, many total loss of life if you're not prepared. And um, economical is um, it costs uh, very uh, telah banyak uh, kita akan pakai uh, kerugian lebih banyak lah okay, kerugian. Jadi okay, semua term tu saya dah betul. Right, so here uh, is actually frequently asked question. Okay, normally I find this as well. If uh, normally I give talk to people and they will. Uh, usually ask this question. So the first question is about where will future earthquake occur? Okay, normally we don't know where will future earthquake occur, but if we trace back uh, our record, our previous recordings, uh, 100 years, 200 years, 300 years, and the very good one is 500 years. So we can see this pattern of earthquake and um, we can know where this earthquake will happen in the future, okay, based on the trans record on the past historical data. And then uh, what will be the size and their frequency of occurrence? So the size is uh, based on our database as well. 
So if we trace back our historical data and we have to look into how has this area has created a uh, which and highest and highest magnitudes. Okay, for example, in Rana we have 6.0. So this is will be the uh, earthquake, largest earthquake and um, 6.0. So probably in the future, we have to increase our design up to 6.5. And in order to know that this uh, 6.5 will happen in the future. And the frequency of occurrence, so how many times this uh, six method will happen in the future. So we have to look back our trends of uh, data, a quick historical data. For example, 100 years, between 100 years, 50 years, 50, 30 years. So we have to look back uh, how many times this earthquake uh, coming will be in the future. So we can have only uh, based on estimation. So, but for more, for big earthquakes like eight and um, nine, it's uh, considered as a rare earthquake. So a rare earthquake probably we uh, take as a uh, fifty years uh, fifty years of occurrences between fifty years occurrences something like that. And um, the third question is about what will be the ground shaking density at the site produced by earthquake of different sites, focal depth, and epicenter location. So the ground shaking intensity, so we have to look under the modified mechanic scale. So once the earthquake coming, so we look our structure is a badly damaged. So the intensity will be six to seven or five to six. So this is will be the MMI scale is a, our standard uh, Standard form, so we should measure, measure our uh, intensity based on the our structure uh, that has um, damaged by the earthquake. Then the next question on how will the ground motion be influenced by local soil conditions and geology? So the ground motion is actually the earthquake loading. Sir. Okay, normally we have uh, earthquake loads from uh, prediction from the hazard assessment. But due to the local soil conditions, we have to do. Uh, we have to refer our uh, building code that have the amplification factor. So the amplification factor. So we have to times with the amplification factor uh, based on the type of soil. So that we can have the ground motion uh, that will be based on the different type of soil. And then what will the earthquake hazard landslide equation produce at the site? So this is uh, you can done some simple study or literature around that area or just uh, make a uh, sample that uh, happened. Uh, there, is there any record that this area has uh, produced some landslide and liquefaction? We can actually calculate uh, some of these um, hazards. Okay, for the like just a small population and uh, predict uh, is there any uh, landslide in that area okay so it can be based on the uh, visual observation as well or from the theoretical and then lastly is uh, how about the susceptibility of building and structure to damage from the ground shaking and uh, ground failure so this is uh, based on the vulnerability uh, vulnerability of the buildings, whether the building can survive or not the, uh, from the earthquake. So, uh, but this is uh, on the based on the vulnerability assessment. So, most of the uh, analysis is uh, we have to do some analysis using software in order to check our building is uh, can able to sustain from earthquake loads, and also we can uh, do some visual inspection to the building. So uh, this is actually the, uh, I would say the equation normally we, uh, how we calculate disaster. So disaster is uh, actually equals to hazard times the vulnerability and then times with the exposure. So the hazard is uh, not natural or man-made phenomena. It can be earthquake, earthquake or man-made means that uh, explosive. So the shaking from explosive can be one of the hazards and um, other type of hazards like floods, um, 
any flood or wind, something like that. Okay. And then the vulnerability is uh, if we lack of uh, resources of community. So uh, the greatest benefit uh, can be achieved is uh, we have to reduce the vulnerability to hazard. So if we uh, lack of resource for communities uh, or uh, we have the buildings that are built in uh, inappropriate, so the vulnerability will be high. And then the exposure is uh, how uh, people know about this hazard. So uh, normally uh, people don't know about this hazard. So this is the exposure. Lah. So we have to make people know about the earthquake in our uh, area. So the disaster is uh, actually a sudden accident of natural catastrophe that caused uh, great damage or loss. And this hazard and vulnerability is actually the risk. Okay, so how can we reduce uh, the risk? To reduce the risk of disaster and increase safety, so we need to estimate our hazard, so our hazard properly, in order to reduce the vulnerability. So if we manage to get uh, some uh, data of hazard, so suitable of seismic design loads, for example. So we can make a building that's safer to people. So it will increase the safety of the buildings. And we can also uh, max exposure to people and increase awareness to the people so that people know uh, about the risk they will get. Okay, coming from the natural hazard. So uh, we go to the next on the seismic hazard definition. So yeah, need part there uh, a bit um, toxic. So we will start from the seismic hazard definition first. So the seismic hazard, so saya punya putih-putih lah. Hopefully you can see. The seismic hazard is the probability that an earthquake will occur in a given geographic area within a given window of time and with ground motion intensity exceeding a given threshold. So it can be used as a probability or deterministic capability. So we have to capture all the earthquake uh, situation in that area. So we can predict within uh, 100 years uh, record or 500 years report, so we can know what will be the uh, seismic hazard in that area. Then seismic hazard assessment (SHA). So normally we use the seismic hazard. Uh, we assess uh, in terms of seismic hazard can address any natural hazard associated with earthquake, including ground shaking, fault rupture, landslide, liquefaction, and tsunami. Then most interest in is in the estimation of ground, uh, ground shaking hazard since it caused the largest economic losses in most aspects. So ground shaking hazard is due to vibration. Okay. So uh, normally we use the uh, estimation from the ground shaking hazard. Then um, ground motion is the predominant cause of damage from earthquake, building collapse, dam failure, landslide occupation are all the direct results of ground motion. So what is ground motion parameters? So there are many different uh, ground motion parameters. Uh, sometimes they use as a displacement or velocity, acceleration or spectral acceleration as well as MMI. And all of these five, we normally use a peak ground acceleration. Peak ground acceleration is uh, one to be the most uh, usable or considered and preferred ground motion parameter in this uh, seismic design analysis. So seismic hazard is a ground shaking hazard or the probability of occurrence of potentially destructive seismic ground shaking at a given site within a given time interval. And uh, this is about 10% probability of accident in 50 years. So it means that 
this is corresponding to the ground shaking hazard that probability at a site in uh, 50 years while experiencing PGA more than 0.1 G is 10%. I will explain more on these terms later on, but only this one, only the terminology. Lah. And 50 years is actually the exposure time. So uh, if we make um, some illustration of our structure, so our structure will uh, shake, okay, shake uh, on this horizontal. So this uh, shaking, we normally uh, get the load of seismic in terms of ground acceleration or peak ground acceleration. So the uh, inside our building, uh, force of our building will be equal to mass time acceleration. So the mass is coming from our building. So the acceleration is coming from our uh, peak ground acceleration or the seismic loads. So this is we call as a design ground motion parameters. And these uh, different building codes will provide the ground motion parameters or input required to calculate the factor of fake force, and those input is the function of P. So uh, this is the acceleration that we have, right? Yeah. So this is in terms of uh, peak ground acceleration. Okay, this one, and this one is uh, in terms of the velocity, peak ground velocity. And this one in terms of peak ground displacement. And the uh, peak ground acceleration is the index of seismic loading. And this one used the terms of GAL. The GAL is uh, 980 GAL is actually equal to 1 G. Okay. So here we are again. Uh, so uh, we measure the uh, seismic loads based on its uh, peak ground or ground acceleration. So in a global seismic hazard map, this is one of the outcome from coming from the seismic hazard assessment. So the touch short form this is is uh, is actually seismic hazard assessment. And if you look into this um, map, so it's uh, categorized uh, with zones. So zone zero, zone zone one, zone two, three until four, and this map is um, with an accident probability of ten percent in fifty years, equivalent to return period of four seventy five years for medium subsoil condition. So it means that the ten percent is uh, the chance for the earthquake will achieve certain PGA more than this PGA will happen in the future. So it means that 90% would not happen. Lah. So um, the explanation will explain later on. Lah. And uh, about this zone, if you can look into this, um, uh, this area is uh, categorized as zone uh, 0 to 1. And some yellow area is zero, uh, zone 1. And uh, the red area, can see here is a zone five. So from this year, uh, this uh, you can see the color is actually the red one is the uh, the highest PGA value means that the uh, earthquake shaking the seismic loads is higher. The acceleration is higher. So it can be 0 0.4, 0 0.8, and normally we found this uh, on the uh, area where it flows uh, very close to, to the active fault line. So we can see here for uh, Indonesia region and Philippines region also has the uh, zone for uh, and below. And um, this one uh, is uh, we interpret uh, on we can see that how uh, where is the area which is uh, under uh, high seismic zone, high seismic uh, activity or high seismic zone. So we can look this uh, map to look into how uh, big is uh, its intensity within that area. 
And if we focus more towards our uh, peninsula Malaysia, okay. So contohnya kita ambil the uh, okay this one time. So we know that it equals to three percent of G. Means that equals to zero point zero three G. So the maximum or the acceleration value for Kuantan is equal to 0.03 G, means the acceleration is equal to 0.03 G. So the, the map is showing the contour, okay, in the unit of percent of G, means this map is for 10% probability of accidents in 50 years exposure period, means that 10% that earthquake happens in the future more than 0 0.03 G will be 10%. Whereas 90% will be less than 0 0.03. Faham tak? Okay, I repeat again. 0 0.03 G of this maximum acceleration for this quantum area. For the, when there are 10% probability of this value, PJ value, more than 0.03 G will happen in the future. So it is equal to 10%. So 90% will not uh, achieve 0 0.03. So 90% will be lower than 0 0.03 G. So this is the expected maximum acceleration value for this area. So we can uh, use this uh, maximum acceleration value in, inside our uh, building design. So the 50 years exposure period, normally we are uh, in designing uh, building or other structure, normal structure or uh, dams or bridges. So we use this exposure time of 50 years. It means within 50 years, the building still can survive. Yeah, within 50 years, that the 10% probability is exceeding, uh, the probability of exceeding is only 10%. Okay, if 10% uh, achieving more than 0 0.03 G. And uh, in the 100 seismic hazard assessment, we have uh, two types actually. One is uh, using as a probabilistic or deterministic. Only two types. So the first one is uh, DSHA. DSHA is a deterministic seismic hazard assessment when we consider only single scenario. So we have a um, fault line that are uh, closer to our site and uh, one this fault line that produce the highest magnitude and we will calculate based on one source only. And uh, we use, uh, we calculate each of these uh, seismic sources and we will uh, calculate what will be the maximum peak ground acceleration based on this uh, seismic process. But we only pick one value, which is the maximum one. And then the next uh, second uh, type of seismic hazard assessment, which is a probability seismic hazard assessment or PSHA, is uh, we tackle all the uh, parameters of the fault line, the magnitude, and um, the recurrence of the earthquake database that related to this area. So we have to calculate all the possibility of fault or seismic or earthquake under this area. So we perform and combine all the parameters into one that then finally will get the big ground acceleration. So um, this also means that the deterministic is a subset of the probabilistic methodology. It can be one of the methods uh, small method, deterministic, and then we advance the deterministic uh, analysis, and then we include in the uh, probabilistic analysis. So this is uh, the general information or general uh, method, the general uh, steps in order to perform the seismic hazard assessment. The first step is we have to look into our earthquake source. 
based on the fault line, okay, the, the type of the fault line, the focal depth of the fault line, and the database of uh, our site of interest, the magnitude, and how far the earthquake uh, will be produced uh, from each of these seismics. And, um, and then we do the analysis using the recurrence uh, rate. So we have to collect the data. For example, we uh, collect the data for 100 years, 200 years, 300 years. So we combine all this data and then do the uh, recurrence rate analysis in terms of the uh, number of events per year uh, versus the magnitude. So one magnitude per three will uh, give one uh, rate of insurance. So one magnitude and different magnitude will give different recurrence uh, rate. And then uh, the third one is the attenuation. So uh, detonation is uh, how the energy of a state will be attenuated uh, when subject to a uh, distance of zero kilometer until 1,000 kilometers. So how it will reduce its uh, acceleration from um, the focus point until the end of the site. So there are uh, attention function is uh, based on the mathematical equation. Um, Normally, we use uh, the terms as the attenuation and um, some uh, analysis. We The terms is changed into ground motion prediction equation or GMTE. Then starting 2020, the terms again change into ground motion model. So all of these are the same thing. So this is uh, only to do the analysis or based on the um, attenuation function. And then finally, we do the analysis and uh, we'll get the hazard curve. And the hazard curve is the curve, the plot of the probability of accidents versus acceleration. So this one is, uh, I will show you the, this example. Okay, for example, we have, um, yeah, next thing. We have a peak ground acceleration, for example, 0 0.1. Okay, here in this uh, black star, uh, 0 0.1 G okay, is produced for one side. And then we see that the source to distance uh, of this magnitude uh, with the magnitude of M prime. So we can know that, uh, for example, this is uh, 50 kilometers. So 50 kilometer of earthquake with magnitude M prime has produced these numbers of uh, peak ground acceleration, which is equal to 0 0.1 G. And then this um, magnitude M prime okay, with um, that producing this PGA, peak ground acceleration. So we can know that how, uh, how much is the rate of accident means how is uh, the probability of this earthquake happen in one year? So we can uh, plot into this graph. So this means that this is a cumulative annual frequency. So one year, how much is the uh, number of events for one year for this uh, magnitude? And then from the annual uh, rate of accidents or probability of accident with um, this event, the okay, number of uh, event per year, so we can now plot into our uh, hazard curve. So the hazard curve is the plot of annual frequency versus peak ground acceleration. So with this value, we plot under here and the peak ground is uh, this PGA black star, is equals to 0 0.1 is here. So we can plot every peak ground acceleration with the rate of event uh, one year, so with different magnitude. So we will have one curve of as a curve. So curve, So every point will produce a different PGA. 
and different uh, annual rate of accident. So we try to do one uh, example. Okay, this is uh, just a simplified passage in order to understand on this um, uh, the terminology on how we get the probabilistic your motion estimation. So imagine that we have a seismic source A and we are here at this site and this location is with distance of RAP. Okay, distance of RAP. So this side um, to this seismic source where the earthquake happens. So the distance will be RAP. So we assume that the distance of our site to the seismic source is 30 kilometers. Okay, and then we plot these uh, two graphs. For example, uh, we have uh, six magnitude, six magnitude of um, earthquake. So we just plot this uh, six magnitude under this graph. So this graph is coming from the recurrence relationship for seismic source A. So from that seismic source A32. So we plot how uh, is the uh, event per year. So how much event per year for magnitude 3, magnitude 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. And then we plot into this graph. So we get finally into this graph. And then we look into the uh, magnitude 6. So what will be the cumulative annual frequency, which is event per year? So we just go to this side. Oh, that's it. Okay, itulah, uh, kat sini lah. So this area, so means that the event per year is equal to 0 0.08, something like that. Yang ni adalah in terms of the 0 0.10 to 1, if the scale is uh, using the log, log distribution. And then, uh, because our distance is 30 kilometer, so 1, 10, 20, 30. So 30 kilometer with magnitude 6. Okay, so this one is plot based on the GMP or attenuation, a graph of attenuation. So we can say that the 30 kilometer distance with the magnitude of 6, okay, 6, 5.5, 6 or at the middle. So this is based on these two equations. We just uh, assume that this is the location for our um, distance of 30 kilometer. And then if we go to the left, so we can say that the peak horizontal acceleration or peak ground acceleration value that's produced by this six magnitude of earthquake with distance of 30 kilometer is equal to 0 0.07 0 0.06 so 0 0.06 g okay with uh that uh happened on that side so we will receive the peak ground acceleration within 30 kilometer away and uh, with method of Okay, we try uh, one another example. Okay, let's say that if we have EGA level at the site of interest is 0 0.1 G. And then uh, we plot the 0 0.1 G. For example, here we say that it is 6.6 .6 magnitude. 6.6 .6 magnitude. So we plot one line here into this graph of 6.6, and then we go down. Oh, and they repeat, 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 repeat. So 10, 20, 30 kilometer away is the with the magnitude of 6.6, .6, we'll get uh, 0 0.1 g of acceleration. And then if we plot into the cumulative annual uh, frequency, means that in one year, how is uh, number event for this type of uh, earthquake? For example, uh, we have a magnitude of 6.6 .6, okay, using this uh, chart, 6.6 .6 magnitude, and then we plot using this graph annual uh, frequency. 
And then if you go left, it will be equal to 0 0.07. So if we 0 0.007 event. So this 0 0.007 event means in one year, the magnitude of 6.6 .6 will happen uh, with 0 0.07 probability. It, the 0 0.007 event per year. So in order to this uh, earthquake coming in the next year, so the probability is 0 0.007. So the 0 0.07 event per year is actually uh, the annual accident rate. So if you have uh, seven magnitude, so you have to plot seven into this line and go left. So you will get the value. One year, how much will be the number of events? Now we have uh, six magnitude of event with the probability in the next year is 0 0.007. If we collect all the database and we say that the total number of events or annual accidents rate is total number of events divided by the time period. So this 6.6 .6 magnitude will happen in the future is 0 0.07 in next year. So uh, this is the this arrow showing the earthquake event with PGA more than 0 0.10 G. Because we interest only 0.01G. So in next year, that happened in that uh, area, 0.1G. At that site, the annual accident rate will be equal to 0.07. So if we uh, calculate for uh, in the future for 10 years, so you have to times the uh, number of events, 0.07 times with 10 years ahead. 10 years ahead, so you will get uh, 0 0.07 in 10 years. So if you translate into percent, it will be equal to 7%. Or you can say that it is 7% probability of accidents in 10 years. So the probability that the earthquake uh, more than 0 0.G happen at this side will be equal to 7% in 10 years. For PGA, 0.1G. Now, for the return period, it's a reciprocal from, from your um, reciprocal of the uh, number of events. Okay, for example, uh, return period is time period divided by total number of events. So, our total number of events is uh, 0 0.07. Okay. So it means that if we have uh, in one year, one year uh, reciprocal from this uh, probability of event in one year, so the reciprocal will be one divided by 0 0.007. So the return period for this PGA of 0 0.1G will be equal to 143 years. Okay, opening. Okay, so the there are different form health hazard tu. Tapi saya akan uh, tengok balik lah. Saya rasa macam kamu nanti pening pula. Uh, this one, this this actually um, how we translate the probability of accidents and how we translate the return period. The probability of accident is actually a uh, percentage. Okay, percentage that um, how much PGA will happen more than the expected PGA in the future. So for this case, the earthquake event with PGA more than 0.1G that happened in the, in the future will be 7 to 10. Okay, in the exposure time, it's 10 years. 10 years is exposure time. Okay, it can, uh, but normally we use uh, 50 years uh, for the exposure time of our buildings. Right. Then for the return period, it's a reciprocal for our event per year, which is 1 over 0 0.007. So it will translate directly, it will be for 243 years. So either you may use in terms of probability of accidents or the terms return period. So both are the same. 
So there are actually different form of hazard turf. Hazard turf is uh, coming from the seismic hazard analysis uh, explained earlier. But this is the final uh, when we done the seismic hazard analysis and there can be different form of hazard and uh, hazard turf. For example, here we calculate as an annual rate of accident or how much event per year in that area. For example, uh, we have a 0.1 G here. So how much will be the uh, annual rate of accident? So what will be the uh, number of events per year? So for this case, 0.1 G, number of events per year is equal to 0.002. But if we translate into the event per 50 years, so you have to sign 50. And that is the sense, but we interest in 50 years. Exposure time is 50 years. So you have to time 0 0.002 times 50 will be equal to 0 0.1. So this is the rate of accidents in 50 years, okay, which is equal to 0 0.1. Okay, the same also uh, here we is equal to 0 0.1 D. Or it can translate into the same. 10%. So it is time with 100%. So we get 10% or uh, in terms of the probability of accidents in 50 years. This is units percentage and this is zero. So these three usually we use uh, for the hazard curve. But um, for my, uh, usually my analysis will use in terms of percentage or rate of accident in 50 years. And this is example of a uh, seismic hazard map of Sama. You can see that uh, dalam graph tadi tu, okay, this is 10%, right? If we have um, below than that, means that if we have 2%, so how will be the PGA value? Is it going to be higher PGA value or lower PGA value? Or 1% or 0.1%? <laughs> okay, so if we have 2% okay, here, the PGA should be higher. 1% even higher. And if we have 50%, we'll get the much more lower PGA. So 2% will be uh, give you higher uh, PGA value in comparison with your 10% of uh, probability of accident. So this is a map to the list. Okay, I just, uh, this showing the 10% probability of accidents in 50 years. Okay, the map showing uh, the color, the concentration on color, so the more concentrated color will be give you higher PGA. And the difference between 10% to percent 10%, you can see that the PGA is uh, much more lower compared to the 2% probability of accident. Because 10% probability of accident is, um, uh, for normal building, we usually uh, calculate based on 10% probability of accident. So it means that the PGA value will be more than this PGA value is 10%. So it was to 470 years with 10 years with uh, 50 years exposure time. Then we, if we have uh, some sensitive structure such as bridge for plant or building that close to the fault line, so we may use uh, two percent probability of accidents. And if we translate the probability of accidents that happen uh, in that particular area with this PGA value, that will achieve this PGA value is two percent. So the difference 10% to percent, um, two percent if we uh, has a rare event. For example, uh, in hundred years, it that area will have a magnitude of seven or, or eight. So that's why we use uh, two percent probability of accidents because of the rare event. Okay, and then higher magnitude of event would be give you a longer uh, return period. So oh, Simon, for this, um, uh, I will give this assignment to my students and um, to UNIMAP and UMP students. So uh, 
uh, it's based on the depends on your respective lecturer okay if they want to use this as your assessment or not but uh, this uh, question uh, you have to do it for my students okay for a school engineering class ka 47803 so you have to submit this assignment to me hard copy yeah? so this assignment uh, you have to choose uh, let's say you uh, have the PGA is 0.2G with measured 5.5. So you have to determine what will be the uh, PGA level. And so you have to calculate the probability of accident in 20 years. So it means that the number of events per year, you have to time it 20 years. And then uh, determine its return period. So reciprocal from the event per year is uh, 1 over event per year. So you will get the return period. Okay, boleh. All right. So then the second assignment. So tadi tu was zero point two G. Yeah, zero point two G. So you have to repeat again for other cases of PGA level, and then you have to identify the PGA at uh, DBE and MC. So uh, actually the DBE and MCE, DBE is a 10% probability of accident. For example, if we have 10% uh, the number of events uh, somewhere here. Okay, so this is we call as a DBE, so, but we don't know what is the event per year. So you have to identify this DBE is actually equals to 10% probability of accidents. And then MCE should be a uh, much more uh, higher PGA value, which is down here. MCE will be uh, equals to 2% probability of accident. Okay, so what will be the annual rate uh, event per year? So you have to identify the 10% and 2% MCE and 10% DB. So DB is designed as uh, earthquake. And C is the maximum calibre earthquake. Um, just now the example is for one force. So what will be if we have uh, more than one force? So example, we have a seismic force at A, B and C with different uh, distance. So what we need to do is to combine all these annual rate of accidents with the uh, total on uh, this side. So we have to combine the uh, annual accident from source A, from source B, and source C. So that we can get the final rate of accident uh, around this side. So uh, this is what we done using the probabilistic analysis. We combine all the seismic source parameters, then we get the rate of accident uh, at that area. And uh, this is actually the simplified form of how we get the probability of accident. That is how to translate 10% to 500 years uh, or 475 years or 2% into 2475 years. So the G is actually the unit on the acceleration due to Earth's gravity and 1G equals to 900 epigal. So if we use this equation, TR is the return period, okay, which is, uh, for example, 145 years. 475 years or 2475 years and the Q is percent probability of accidents so we interest in 10 percent to percent one percent or 50 percent probability of accidents and T is exposure time so for example if we have um, T exposure time is 50 years and we only interest in 10 percent probability of accidents so you just put the numbers into this equation Return period equals to 1 over 1 minus 1 minus Q. Q is 10% and you need to put into number 0 0.1 and to the power of 1 over T. T is exposure time which is 50 years. So 10% probability of season is equals to 475 years return period. Now you may try for Q is equal to 2% or 1% and see how much the return period for this two probability of accident.
Okay, so this is only uh, on the general information that what we use for the ground motion parameters. So normally we use three, figure acceleration, figure velocity, or spectral acceleration. So traditionally we have uh, used for our building using the peak ground acceleration, okay, which uh, based on the zero second, zero second of uh, PGA. And sometimes they use the design loadings uh, based on the peak ground velocity. And uh, this is a good index to hazard to taller building, but it is not clear how to relate the velocity force in uh, design a taller building. And nowadays uh, they use RSA. So RSA is a response spectral acceleration that involved within the certain period of buildings or uh, not using the zero second period, but they use a uh, short period or long period. So normally they uh, use uh, prefer for low rise building is a short period uh, spectral acceleration. And uh, for higher or moderate level building, we, they use a longer uh, period acceleration. And um, while PGA is what experienced by particles, SA is approximately what experienced by building. So it's nothing. So the SA is the maximum acceleration experienced by them. And we know that the maximum earthquake force in building is the building mass, total building mass will be times with the spectral acceleration. And the, uh, this one is a uh, use of, um, I think it had a section figure. Okay, this is actually the, the last section. So for building, uh, we usually refer our building, uh, common building design code. Um, for Malaysian region, we have our own Malaysian uh, NX code that uh, what will be the uh, a quick uh, building, a quick reason design that's suitable for our building. So um, we use uh, either DBE or um, design based uh, earthquake, which a 10% probability of accident in 50 years. Or you may use the resist the strongest earthquake. So we, uh, again, uh, we, this is the last section of our lecture, which is uh, on the use of probabilistic ground motion of resistance of building. And this is the expected performance of building in modern earthquake region design code. So uh, there, usually we provide uh, two uh, seismic design uh, of uh, parameters for motion, which is one is DBE. A DBE is design based of earthquake, which is equal to 10% probability of accidents. But normal building will uh, use this uh, DBE, which is 10% uh, probability of accidents. So this DBE is uh, resist the design level of earthquake with damage, which may or may not be economically effective but without causing extensive loss of life. And based on MCE is to resist the strongest earthquake shaking expected at the site without collapse, but potentially with extreme damage. So MCE is uh, for 2% probability of accident, DB is for 10% probability of accident. And um, for dams, there are a lot of, uh, um, based on my experience, this uh, dams is uh, quite sensitive for structure and very large structure and uh, can sustain a very uh, loss of life but is uh, much more uh, compared to buildings. So normally we are going to use a very strict of um, uh, design code. So this uh, normally uh, in the uh, project that I involved, we use uh, this uh, standard of I code International Commission of all large dams. And um, typically these um, uh, Standard, we will use uh, even more uh, written period, which is 10,000 years written period. So for our low to moderate, uh, moderate sensitivity, we normally estimate the written period will be 10,000 years. So it is equals to, uh, so we, we call 10,000 years as the maximum considered period, the same name, but uh, in terms of the uh, percent of probability, is we use uh, only zero, uh, at 0.5% probability of accident. And we also calculate for the SEE. SEE is uh, for safety evolution earthquake, which is equal to 5% probability of accident in 100 years. 
about 2000 years recent period. Then uh, normally we design these uh, dams uh, for the exposure time of 50 years or 100 years. So this is depends on the how close the dams to the fault line. And then uh, for bridge, uh, this is uh, we use a different type of code in order to design our bridge uh, based on Eurocode 8 or IDC 2000 or HTO so that uh, we measure the uh, ground motion parameters. Either we use the DBE, the same as building, uh, or equals to 10% probability of accident, or MC, which is equal to 2% probability of accidents. But the exposure time for bridge is uh, normally we take for 50 years or 75 years for bridge. And um, this is the philosophy. Okay, this is the last slide. Philosophy of uh, seismic resistant uh, design for structures. So for minor earthquakes, we uh, usually need to prevent the non-structural damage. A okay, minor earthquake, a uh, small earthquake, three, four. So we try uh, our best to prevent any non-structural damage. And if we have moderate earthquake, so we have to prevent our structure damage and minimize the non-structural damage. So moderate earthquake, normally we found some uh, non-structure damage, then, uh, but we have to prevent our main structure damage, column beam. Okay. And for major earthquakes, okay, the active uh, or much bigger magnitude of earthquake, so we have to avoid the building from collapse, and we try to save more life okay, if we have the major earthquake. So I think that's the uh, only uh, last slide, so that's all for my lecture today so i would like to thank you very much for listening to this lecture